Hi, my name is Joe Carlos. Uh, we are continuing our discussion of tuning barrel harmonics in the AR-15. And the next technique that I'm going to uh, describe uh, has its genesis decades ago. Uh, when I was a young lad in my misspent, misspent youth, hunting deer uh, back in the uh, woods of Pennsylvania during the 1960s. Um, from time to time, we would hear stories of some poor deer hunter who couldn't hit the broadside of a barn because his deer rifle was no good, and some smart guy would come in and take a, a matchbook and strategically fold that cardboard matchbook and make a shim out of it and he would either install that shim uh, right at the front of the barrel, at the, at the front of the stock, between the stock and the barrel, or he would install that shim uh, back right in front of the action uh, where the barrel starts, and he would put this um, in, in the barrel channel of the stock between the barrel and the stock itself, and magically, uh, the gun that uh, minutes ago wouldn't hit anything became a tack driver and its owner uh, killed all kinds of deer, passed it on to his uh, sons and grandsons. They in turn killed all kinds of deer with this uh, accurized um, deer rifle. I never met anybody back in Pennsylvania in the 1960s who actually had done this. It was always third hand of this person's uncle or barber uh, heard of this um, uh, going on. My rifle shot okay, so I never messed with sticking cardboard shims uh, under, uh, under the barrel uh, between it and the, and the stock. But uh, decades later, I happened to be reading this book Rifle Accuracy Facts by um, Harold Vaughn. And uh, he's a physicist uh, of some sort and a, a truly smart guy. It's a good book. And um, he mentioned a technique similar to what I had heard back in the 1960s uh, in the Pennsylvania deer woods. And he called it the O'Connell bedding technique and it used pretty much the same principle, and he said that that um, made bolt-action rifles shoot much better. And I wondered if there was a way of adapting uh, these techniques to the AR-15. I gave it a little bit of study, and I found that actually the AR-15 is quite easy uh, to use this type of technique with because AR-15 shooters for national match shooting use these metal float tubes, they're called. Uh, it's actually just a, a, basically a piece of pipe with uh, a triangular handguard end cap on one end and the sling swivel and a, a barrel nut and, and delta assembly on the back end. And what that does is it goes over the match barrel, uh, leaving a little bit of gap between the barrel and this float tube. And then the handguards go over the top of it. And you can look at one of these rifles that, that has um, one of those um, inside of it. You'll never know it's there. The gun looks just like uh, a rifle in a military armory somewhere. The purpose of this float tube is um, a lot of shooters like to use uh, sling tension on their rifle to steady the rifle and to help counter recoil. If you do that with a gun uh, that has the sling swivel uh, attached to the front sight housing, such as this GI barrel, when you put that Gorilla um, uh, sling tension on there, you're actually bending that barrel. And you don't have to be real strong. You don't have to be a weightlifter uh, to do that. 
so you're, you're changing your zero, you're, you're just messing everything up. Therefore, if you use this float tube and you put your sling tension on that, it does not have an influence on the barrel. So national match shooters use this uh, float tube under their hand guards. And I simply wanted to be able to provide support under the barrel, just like the deer hunters back in Pennsylvania did with their matchbook shims. Um, and I figured if I would drill holes in the underside of this float tube, tap them, put a set screw in there, run that set screw up against the bottom of the barrel, I could accomplish pretty much the same thing as the cardboard shims and it would be a, a considerably more permanent uh, job. So I took uh, a standard hand guard, clamped it in place, took a sharpie and um, marked where the vent holes, these are the vent holes here, I marked where the vent holes would line up with this float tube that's underneath it, took this off, drilled my holes in, in the um, center of where those vent holes were so that I could move my support um, anywhere that I wanted it without having to remove the hand guard. Having done that then and having tapped these holes uh, for any given set screw that you want to use, um, we're ready to tune harmonics again. The way that we do that, or the way that I do it, is I, I, put, my, uh, I put my first set screw in the hole that's closest back towards the delta assembly. And I run that up against the bottom of the barrel and I use an inch pound torque wrench and I torque it uh, to a very modest 15 inch pounds. Again, I go out to the range, shoot groups with known lots of ammo, then I move the set screw to the next position, which would be the second hole out from the delta assembly. Same torque, same ammo, back out to the test range, shoot more groups, move it to the third, repeat the process. When I'm all done, I've shot groups at each of these uh, hole positions, and I just simply compare my targets, and I see which is the best uh, group to date. Let's say that the best group occurs at position number three, three holes forward of the delta ring. Then I'm going to drill another hole just behind that temporary uh, sweet spot and another one right in front of that temporary sweet spot, right where my uh, fingers are, are pointing on this float tube. I'm going to drill holes there. I'm going to tap them. I'm going to uh, run my set screw back up at the same uh, torque setting, use the same ammunition, and I'm going to shoot two more groups to see if either of those groups are better than the temporary sweet spot. If they are, that's great. Uh, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to semi-permanently locate that set screw in that location. Now, what I do is I dress the set screw so that when it's run up at its uh, 15 foot pounds, it's going to be even, it's going to be flush with the, um, with the surface of the float tube. Uh, then I'm going to run, I'm going to slop it up with red Loctite, run it up uh, with the same torque again, and um, then I'm going to stake it very similar to the way that we stake the uh, screws that hold um, the gas key on an AR-15 uh, bolt carrier. Use the same staking tool, it's available from Brownells, stake the, the top of that uh, set screw in two or three locations so that it's not going to back out no matter what. Now if you recall, 
uh, when I introduced this section, I said that those smart deer hunters back in Pennsylvania, is that an oxymoron? Well, I said that those deer hunters back in Pennsylvania um, either located their cardboard shims under the barrel where the barrel comes out of the action, or they located uh, the shim at the front of the stock, almost at the end of it. So in the interest of being thorough, I repeated everything with uh, my tuning holes located in the front of the float tube instead of the back of the float tube. I repeated everything uh, that I just discussed and what I found was, yes, I can locate a, um, a sweet spot at the front half of the float tube that will shoot equally as well as the sweet spot that I located at the back of the float tube. The reason that I prefer the back of the float tube is, um, again, these gorillas, when they, uh, when they get into their uh, slings, exert a tremendous amount of uh, pressure on this float tube. And they are bending this float tube somewhat. Hopefully they're not bending it uh, clear down to where it contacts the uh, barrel. But my reasoning is if, um, if I put it out front here, there's going to be more flex at that location uh, on, the, um, on the float tube. When these guys get into the, the sling, that flex by pulling down is going to be pulling that set screw away from the barrel and changing the amount of pressure, upward pressure, that you're exerting on the bottom of the barrel. The amount of up, upward pressure is critical, so uh, my preference is to locate the, um, uh, the support at the back of the barrel as opposed to the front of the barrel, but you're welcome to um, locate yours wherever you think is best. I will also tell you that the amount of torque that you exert on this set screw has an influence on accuracy as well. So it's, it's a good idea if you've been using, say, 15 foot-pounds and you've located what you think is your sweet spot, you can always increase that to 20 foot-pounds and shoot another group, decrease it to 10 foot-pounds and shoot another group, and if you see uh, that your groups are getting better at one of those other two settings, either more torque or less, then you can follow that um, with your targets and continue in that direction uh, until your groups start getting bigger again. Um, so you don't have to use 15 foot-pounds, but 15 foot-pounds is a very good starting point. Now, there are a lot of shooting disciplines out there and uh, certainly many of them do not use this type of a float tube. A lot of uh, shooting disciplines will use something different. For instance, this 26-inch um, uh, match rifle, I use a JP Enterprises um, unit on it. That would not be legal for shooting service rifle, but it is legal for shooting match rifle. Uh, it's legal for um, um, F-class, long range, that type of thing. I like the, uh, the JP uh, float tube because I can remove the front section and I can tune uh, by varying the torque on the barrel nut of this, or I can tune using the method that we just spoke of with uh, under barrel support. And the way that works is, if you'll notice, this, um, this JP handguard has got two sling swivels attached to it, one to the front, one to the rear. And the way that those sling swivels attach, there's a, a, a dovetail up in the, um, in the handguard itself, and the sling swivel just um, uh, screws into that dovetail and uh, if you want to move the location of it, you just loosen the uh, sling swivel a little bit, 
and you can move these in any location that's comfortable for you, uh, your arm length and your position that you're shooting from. So when I want to tune a barrel harmonics using the under uh, the barrel support uh, with this type of handguard, I simply replace the sling swivel stud with a set screw of the appropriate thread, and I use the same technique uh, that I used a uh, minute ago. Uh, I start it in one position with uh, a given amount of torque, usually 15 foot-pounds for me, uh, and then I move it, I move it, and I keep shooting groups. I look at, at my, um, my groups. I find the one that, that is um, uh, the best, and then I'll go just a little bit on either side of that one and um, see if I can fine tune and, and, and get it a little more accurate. There are just tons and tons and tons of different uh, configurations of hand guards out there, and uh, I'm sure that many of them uh, won't work with either technique, but uh, you do have the flash suppressor technique if you have a flash suppressor, and there are other techniques that I'm going to go into here in a minute uh, that will work with other types of handguards.